Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of interviews with our astronomers here at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. Today I'm here with Hannah Banyard, one of the public astronomy officers at the observatory. Hello Hannah. Good afternoon Greg. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's get started by talking about when you got interested in astronomy in the first place. Was this something that was uh, very early on or did it happen much later on? So for me, it was really early on, as soon as I can remember. I grew up in a little town in the southeast corner of Kent. So when I went outside, you could see the stars. It's not quite the same as here in London. Um, and, you know, the longer you looked, you just couldn't count how many you were seeing. And my parents were quite good. If uh, it was a meteor shower or something, they'd wake up me and my brother and we'd go outside, lie in the garden and see all of the shooting stars. So it was definitely something that... Uh, yeah, I was interested in from a young age, and I was one of those kids who always asked why. So that definitely helped when we were looking at space. It's like, oh, I want to know more. And did that uh, continue the whole way through? Was it sort of, I'm going to be an astronomer for the entirety of your, your childhood and on into uh, adolescence? So as a kid, I didn't really know astronomy was a job anything like that you know I sort of knew scientist was a job but I thought that meant being stood in a lab testing things and I didn't really fancy <laughs> that um, and sort of as I grew up I was still interested in sort of maths and science and how things worked but uh, as I he headed into my teenage years I decided that music journalism was something oh, really? I would be interested in <laughs> yes yes definitely uh, that sort of time very interested in music probably just looking for free festival tickets things yeah, like was, that were, were, there, were there any bands or groups in particular that you were you were trying to uh, get closer to? <laughs> those are some stories for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would always quite like writing as well, and that was something that I enjoyed music, so I thought oh, I could write about music. But then obviously music magazines sort of died a death <laughs> thanks to the it internet. Did rather, yeah. yeah, so I think uh, that career sort of took, took a turn for me, and um, as I went into sort of my A-levels and got a little bit back on track, I thought about um, doing sort of physics and biology and maths, and then I hadn't really decided what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to do sort of something science-based, but I wasn't quite sure where um, I was going to end up at that point. And so having taken those particular A-levels, you were thinking of taking that on to university, presumably? Yes, I always sort of had this plan of go to university, I was going to do something sciencey, and it wasn't really until I went to a university open day and started looking at the specific courses that I could take. And I've been kind of interested in conservation, you know, sort of saving the animals, I was a big fan of pandas and dolphins and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and I got to this conservation talk and I came out and I thought, mm, it's okay, but I didn't really feel sort of inspired. And I saw there was an astronomy and astrophysics course as well, and I thought, oh, well, you know, I've just been interested in space, so maybe I'll have a look at that. And I came out of that, and I just decided on the spot that's what I wanted to do. So um, it must have been a really good talk. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Um, and so you went to university. Where, where was that then? Uh, at the University of Kent in Canterbury. Mm. And was that... Uh, so some university degrees there, immediately sort of four-year master's degrees, some three-year uh, bachelor's degrees. Which one did you go for? Uh, so it was a three-year BSc and with an additional year abroad. Oh, um, a year abroad? Okay, so where, where did you go to? Uh, so I went off to Canada, which oh, okay, nice. surprised most of my family because I'm notorious for hated and cold. Um, oh, right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is an odd one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I went to the University of Trent, which is in Peterborough, which is a town just outside of Toronto in Ontario, um, and the campus was set across a river, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm. It was Canada, stunning. I'd never been before, and I thought, wow, what an opportunity to go. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a, a fantastic experience. I remember the first uh, night that I'd arrived, so I must have been up early in the morning, flown there, packed all of my stuff for a year, which isn't easy. I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, it did pay for a bit of extra luggage. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, when we arrived, we sort of all herded off together, all of the international students, and we went to a three day summer camp. Okay. Um, which is as American as it sounds. I've never <laughs> experienced anything like it. And upon landing, it was 40 degrees Celsius. Oh. This was September. I'd assumed Canada was going to be quite chilly. Yeah. Yeah, so it, I was so hot. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but we arrived at this summer camp. 
um, and sort of went to bed for the night. There's like no internet, no sort of connection or anything. So my poor parents at home wondering if I'd landed okay. I've never really heard anything. Uh, we were there for three days, but it was in the middle of nowhere. And uh, one evening I'd sort of gone off to bed early because the jet lag was really getting to me. But uh, one of my friends came around and sort of knocked on the door and woke me up because they'd been sat down by the lake and just on the jetty. The sky was so clear that the stars were reflecting in the water. Oh, beautiful. So we all sort of laid down looking at the stars, reflecting in the water. And yeah, that sort of started off the year pretty well for our oh, year abroad. It, it sounds like it. So what, what sort of things did you uh, did you learn while you were in Canada? What, was there anything in particular that um, was different about that to, to being in the UK? So I think the, uh, the Canadian university system is much like the American system, but very different to the UK. For the first time I was able to actually choose some of my modules, which on my physics degree I wasn't able to in the UK hmm. because it was uh, quite a strict set of modules. So I was allowed to sort of take one or two complete wild cards. So I took one module on the um, anthropology of uh, computer games. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> uh, which was a little bit out there, yeah. um, but I sort of played games growing up and whatnot, and I liked writing, interested in people as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we got to spend a year sort of uh, playing a game online with each other in the background to see how people interacted with one another, and it was a really interesting sort of uh, different thing to do compared to sort of the strict nature of a physics degree. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed that. And then, uh, so you come back to the UK, um, did you uh, consider going on to do a, a master's, possibly even going into to research or something along those lines? Yeah, so sort of when I came back and I had to complete my final year in the UK, I was starting to think about what am I going to do next? <laughs> it comes around pretty quickly and I knew I was really uh, ready to perhaps start a career yet. I was thinking about maybe if I want to go into academia and continue studying. So the next option was to do a master's. So I decided I would do a master's at UCL in planetary science. So whilst I'd been abroad in Canada, I'd taken a module on astrobiology. Mm. And this is quite a new emerging yeah. branch in astrophysics at the time. So I was surprised there was even a whole module on it, really. <laughs> uh, but it was fantastic. And the, uh, the lecturer was actually part of Toronto's ultimate frisbee team. Oh, oh good. <laughs> excellent. Uh, yeah, it's a really engaging. I uh, never got to see him play, but he did try and sell his tickets. <laughs> Clearly very familiar with identify fine objects, though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and I found that really, really interesting. And of course, you know, uh, during my A-levels and whatnot, I'd done biology. I'd always been interested in that side. And so astrobiology is essentially sort of the study of aliens, the search yeah. for life. And to me, that feels like the biggest question that we can really ask of the universe is, are we alone or are we not? Um, and so I thought if I move into planetary science, that's a step towards moving into astrobiology. So at the end of your master's, what did you decide to do after that? Yeah, so much in the same way as when I was coming to the end of my undergrad, I thought, oh, I'm coming to the end of my master's, what do I want to do? And I thought originally I wanted to stay in academia, go into research, but I'd been at university for quite a long time at this point, so I thought I'd probably give myself a break. And actually, in my final year of my undergrad, we did sort of a big group project where we had to do a large presentation at the end. And I'd never been particularly confident with public speaking. And it was a bit of a nightmare, really, for me, to be honest, at first. But it, and I, it was something that I'd been worried about, but I'd sort of had enough practice. And after I'd sort of delivered my presentation and that, I'd had a lot of good feedback from my peers about it, saying that actually it was really good. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, that's something that I didn't think I was very good at. Uh, so that was sort of in the back of my head, and I quite enjoyed doing that um, you know gone well and so when I was coming to the end of my masters and I was looking for possible jobs I could go into I really wanted to remain um, doing something to do with astronomy and space I didn't want to run off into the finance world which lots of us physicists end up doing I did fancy sort of big data and statistics and whatnot um, and so sort of having a look and I came across um, a job at the observatory which uh, was for astronomy education assistant 
Um, and I've always been quite passionate about education as well. So sort of growing up in a more disadvantaged area, there weren't always really that many opportunities for people similar to myself. And it felt like a bit of an uphill battle to sort of get um, to where I wanted to be. And so I saw this opportunity of science communication, talking to people, working somewhat in education as well, and having the chance to perhaps interact with people who've been a bit like me at a younger age and tell them that astronomer is a job. You know, I didn't know that when I was younger. And um, yeah, I thought, well, that's something that I, I'd uh, go for. So you were in the astronomy education assistant role for uh, a year, a year and a bit, something like that. Yeah, just over a year. Um, what did that involve? What, what sort of things were you doing in that role? Uh, so that involved sort of supporting our schools programme, which at the observatory is huge. We've got students in every single day of term time, pretty much. Um, it's, it's so busy on site. Uh, so supporting that program, delivering things like planetarium shows, which the whole team get involved with, um, and it was it was a really a really good job. It was sort of a perfect transition, I'd say, from going from being in university and going into a full time job. For some people, it can be quite jarring depending on what you're going into. But uh, no, uh, credit to the observatory for easing me in there, definitely. <laughs> uh, but uh, through throughout that role, I did start to become a little bit envious of the public team. I'd say, <laughs> because I don't, don't want to say it too much, but I think they have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as it turned out, uh, a role in the public team did come up as one of the public astronomy officers, um, and you applied for it, and you got it, yes. and do they have more fun? <laughs> yes, they definitely okay. do, I would say, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, obviously our schools program is fantastic, uh, but the public team, we get far more opportunity to do sort of the one-offs, the things that are a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I got really interested in that because I was sort of able to put my own spin on things, have more of a, a creation role in like creating programs specifically uh, for different groups of people in different communities as well. So you said that uh, in your undergrad you're a bit more shaky when it comes to sort of public presentation yeah. and of course this role does a lot of it especially even to press and to media so clearly that's improved how how's that gone well thank you very much for us greg i hope <laughs> it has done i hope you've seen some improvement as well uh, well the press and media involvement is something which drew me to the public astronomer um, role in particular because I thought yeah my presentation has improved but if I can continue to do that I'd really like to and it, it's been brilliant I've had so many opportunities now uh, doing sort of live news interviews which is all a bit sudden and um, you're never really quite prepared for it <laughs> uh, but that's it you, you learn how to how to get by without being necessarily too prepared and um, and that's, that's been really, really fun to do. And on top of that, we get to do lots of um, written media as well, lots of publications. And obviously, I'd mentioned back in my, my festival going days, I wanted to be a music journalist. So that's sort of satisfied that part of me as well. I get to write a lot too. Um, and in fact, you're actually writing one of the, the books in our Illuminate series as well. What's that one going to be on? Yes. Well, unsurprisingly, it's about life in the universe. Is it really? <laughs> yes, it really is. I know, I do just go on and on about aliens. <laughs> um, but as I said, I think it's really interesting. Uh, yeah, so my book will be about uh, life in the universe, um, perhaps what life is, how we're looking for it, and what we expect to find, and if we will ever find it. Uh, I've, I've very much looked forward to reading it. So, not that we have any intention of uh, getting rid of you or anything along those lines, <laughs> but uh, when you do eventually leave the observatory, are you thinking of uh, staying on in science communication, or are you considering taking up that research post that you were thinking of sometime in the past? Yeah, so I think I'll always have something to do with science communication, I'll always definitely keep that as part of my career. Uh, I, just, I think it's so, so important to be able to talk to not only children but the wider public as well. You know, not everyone has had the opportunity to experience science in a way that is palatable to them, that is just sort of understandable. We speak in so much jargon all the time <laughs> that it's really important to make sure that people understand the importance of science. So I'll definitely continue that part, but I do want to uh, go into research at some point. 
I'd get my PhD in astrobiology, and the dream would be if it was in Canada, but we'll see oh. <laughs> about that, <laughs> won't we? I do miss the mountains. <laughs> you, you'll be able to deal with the cold. I will be able to deal with the cold. Do you know what, though? The big thing is, is we had temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius. I was outside taking a trip to the museum. <laughs> um, well, you know, we'd be tra- like walking across um, Ottawa, we go into the Natural History Museum, um, and we, we only had to walk a mile, but we had to stop about three times so that no one would get frostbite <laughs> and go indoors. <laughs> but I will say that the cold here feels worse. I don't oh, know really? what it is yet. It doesn't get that cold in the UK, of course, but there's something about it. The UK cold is different. <laughs> Well, I was about to say that uh, we, we, we can provide at least some advice for people at home that if they do have issues with the cold, move to Canada for a year because apparently that solves it. But no, apparently it doesn't solve it at all. Okay. But do you have any advice for, for a, a bug of astronomer, someone who wants to get into astronomy or perhaps science communication um, sometime in the future? Yeah, so firstly I recommend just going outside at night and looking up at the sky, even if you are in a city and you sort of take a glance up every now and then and you think, oh there's nothing worth looking at. I promise you that there is, sometimes you just have to wait a little while, around 20 minutes for your eyes to adapt and you can end up seeing more in the sky. And as well, if you can find a local astronomy group that you could um, go along to, perhaps look through a telescope for the first time if you never have. One thing I'd really recommend looking at is a planet, especially if you can see Saturn. I remember, still remember looking at Saturn for the first time through a small telescope in my back garden, and you can see the rings on the planet so clearly. It looks like it's just stuck on the end, um, but it's not. And that's, um, it sort of really brings astronomy home to you. It makes it feel real at that point, instead of seeing all of these beautiful pictures, but they seem so far away, mm-hmm. that makes it seem uh, so much closer and so much more achievable. So I'd really recommend doing that if you can. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Hannah, for talking with us uh, today. Now, over the past few weeks, I put many of our astronomers through their worst nightmares, talking for 20 minutes about themselves. Next time, it's going to be me. I can't wait. I'm sure you can't. Thank you very much. Thank you.